Well, hey, you guys. Welcome to the Needy Homesteader channel. Um, I'm Diane, the canning nana, and I'm a guest host today. And um, the way I know Heather is through YouTube. Um, I've been watching her for about nine or ten years, and she's taught me a whole lot of stuff about canning, you guys. Um, one of the main things that I've really benefited from is canning beans. So I love Heather's way of doing it, um, and I have researched it, and um, it's, not, it's a little controversial, the, the no-soak method, but it's something that I prefer, especially with pinto beans, um, and they come out perfectly well. They, they are absolutely scrumptious. So I'm going to do this a little bit backwards because I don't have editing capabilities on my uh, my phone at the moment. So these are beans that are no soak method. Okay. So when you open these, um, you mix them up. I use them for refried beans, all different things. You can use them for chili, whatever you can put, um, onions in here. We're going to be doing hatched chili peppers today. Um, but you can see now I think this one, yeah, this one has onion in it. So, um, this comes out perfectly fine, and this is no soak. You can also pre-soak them. There is a difference, and I'll show you that in just a second. So what we want to do is put the jar here. So I'm using a pint jar, and I am going to fill it with a half a cup of beans. Now, if you want to do quart jars, you would use a cup of beans, and you put it in your clean jar. So I'm also going to be adding a little bit of hatched chili peppers to this, just a little bit. You can add salt in there if you prefer. Make sure it's non-iodized salt. Um, I don't usually do that. I'm, I'm a one ingredient canner for the most part. Um, this way I can pick and choose everything, all the ingredients that I need, and then just throw it into a meal. But these I usually make um, uh, refried beans with, or a chili, or... Um, or, you know, just, gosh, there's so many different recipes you can, I can go on and on with pinto beans, you guys. Um, I'm sure you know what to do with pinto beans, but this way, you're buying a bag at the store, um, and I got a two-pound bag of pinto beans for $2.99, and this will make probably about 20 pints. Um, so if you buy beans in the store, I was at Aldi yesterday, and the beans were... 89 cents a jar. So um, you do the math, you know, spend two or three dollars on a bag of beans and can them yourself or pay almost a dollar per can. I know sometimes they go on sale for like 59 cents or whatever, but still that's, that's uh, still more than what you're doing. So once you fill your jar with a half cup of beans, your non-iodized salt, whatever else you want to put in there. I like to put onions in mine sometime. You're going to Fill the jar with hot water to an inch of headspace. And make sure that you have an inch of headspace, just like this. Make sure you're using clean, filtered water. Um, you don't really want to use tap water. I know where I am, I have very hard water and it leaves hard water deposits everywhere, the white film. Um, and you just don't want to do that. Okay, I have a floating bean in there. Okay, so once you have your water to a half inch of headspace, you get your debubbler. Um, and I want to tell everybody, these debubblers, these are for my channel, but they are going uh, as a fundraiser for Heather and her family over on Etsy. I've got an Etsy store there, the Canning Nana or Jack and Diane Designs. Two dollars out of every one of these debubblers is going to Heather and her family. So I've already made a couple personal donations and one donation so far from my channel. I've also got videos to watch that where it notes that all of the proceeds are going to Heather and her family. Um, I'm also doing Herbal Life and Avon fundraisers where 25% is going to her family. Um, and I thank you for everybody um, on my channel that, that was watching and, um, and are participating in that. I hope more of you do that. So the debubbler comes in handy. You have to have a debubbler, you guys, if you're canners. It's, it's a must. And they were out of stock on Amazon for the longest time. They've just come back, but they're still expensive. So mine are not, <laughs> however. 
So you want to get all of the bubbles out of your beans. And I always get a little bowl with some white vinegar in it and either a cloth or a napkin or a paper towel and you dip it in and then you want to wipe the rim and you wipe the rim for two reasons. One, um, I hope that you've already looked at your jars and made sure that there's no cracks or chips or anything like that. Um, you don't want a cracked or chipped jar when you're canning because you will lose all of the contents of that jar. That jar will break under pressure. So make sure that you have no chips or cracks in your jars. Also, when you're putting the vinegar on here, it takes off any debris or finger oils that you have, but it's also your second chance to feel around that rim and make sure that you don't have any chips or cracks. So once you do that, you are ready to put your ring on. You wanna put your seal on like this and your ring, and you want to tighten it only finger tight. Okay, finger tight, and that's what your jar is going to look like, and you're going to put this into the canner that I have warming on the stove. Next, I'm going to show you guys how to do pre-soaked black beans. I've tried the, um, the uh, no-soaked black beans, and they don't come out as well, so I'm going to show you this. Okay, so here we have our black beans. So I have a whole pot of the black beans here. Um, I bought a two-pound bag of the black beans as well as a two-pound bag of the pinto beans. So, what you want to do differently when you have pre-soaked beans is you want to fill the jar up to the half-inch headspace. I'm going to dump just a little bit of that out. It's a little bit too full because these will expand just a little bit more. They've, these have been soaking overnight. So they're pretty much as big as they're going to get, but just in case. And then I'm going to put some of my hot water in here like this. Fill it up to an inch of headspace or right up the top there. And then you want to take your debubbler, especially with pre-soaked beans, because they have a lot of gases in them. You want to go down the sides of the jars this and also I go through the middle of the jar as well make sure all the beans are there's no bubbles in those beans at all and then usually like now it goes down the level goes down so you have more room and I'm going to put just a little bit more water in here and then I'm going to put the lid and the ring on Get this took inch of headspace here we go Okay, so I'm going to get my vinegar, wipe the rim, and I'm going to put the lid, and I need another ring. Okay, got my ring, I'm going to finger tight that, and I'm going to put it into my canner. So my canner has been going um, on medium heat. These are hot jars, um, so you want to have hot jars, hot canner. If you're going to wait, if everything's going to take you a while, you want to do cold water or cool room temperature water, and the same with your jars, the water inside of your jars. So your food and your canner should always be about the same temperature. Do not put a cold jar into a hot canner. You will have a mess. <laughs> the bottom of the jar will break. Um, believe me, that's not fun. It's happened to me. Also, take the rest of the vinegar in your bowl and put it into the water in your canner. That will help prevent hard water deposits and you won't have that white stuff. Um, on this ring, you can see a little bit the white. This is nothing for my area. If I forget to put vinegar in the water, oh my gosh, really, really bad. <laughs> so I'm going to put this in the canner. Okay, so we're going to be pressure canning both of those beans and they're in the canner together for 75 minutes for pints and um, for quarts, 90 minutes. So I want to say that I want to thank the, the YouTube community for coming together and helping Heather the way it has. Um, oops, sorry about that. I am in awe of everyone who has contributed to Heather's fundraiser and um, sent her cards and gifts and everything. I think that 
um, this YouTube is so special and I kind of coined the phrase a few years ago, sister canners. Well, we have sister canners and we have brother canners now. There's a lot of guys that can. And, um, and Heather is one of those really special sister canners to me. Um, she has inspired me. She's encouraged me with my channel. Uh, four years ago, when I first started, she included me in collaborations and, um, and really got me going. And I've been a part of the canning community ever since. So I just want to thank you guys for everything that you're doing. Um, and uh, yeah, just thanks. <laughs> Come visit my channel. Um, check it out. See if you like, you know, what you see and maybe subscribe to me. There are a couple videos that you can watch that all of the donations, uh, all of the proceeds go to Heather and her family. Um, so yeah, just want to say thank you. And uh, remember the debubblers on Etsy at the Canning Nana, or you can also find us at Jack and Diane Designs. And it's just an N in the middle. So $2 out of every one of these goes to Heather, you guys. So you're also you're getting a debubbler, but you're also helping. So I want to thank you for that. And thank you, Heather, for including me in this. I am honored. I'm honored to do this for you. Um, thank you so much. And um, I'm just sending good wishes and prayers to you and your family. And uh, I know the Lord's arms are wrapped around you as the community uh, surrounds you and, and lifts you up during this time. We love you, Heather. Hi, everybody.